Shared universes are all the rage these days. You can hardly move without seeing that this film is connected to this one, or all of these superheroes exist within the same timeline and so on. But given how ubiquitous the idea has become within popular culture, it's still amazing just how many shared universes there are that most people don't seem to know about, and trust us when we say that video games are chock full of the things. I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 insane hidden connections between video games. Number 10, Hitman, Kane and Lynch. Given that both these titles are set in the real world and revolve around cold-blooded killers, it shouldn't come as any surprise that both the Hitman and Kane and Lynch series take place within the same world. Dating as far back as Hitman Blood Money, the first indication that the scumbag killers also occupy the same locale as Agent 47, comes in the form of a newspaper article that mentions that the pair have escaped prison and are on the run, which of course would lead to the events of the first Kane and Lynch game. And whilst that could be seen as a throwaway easter egg, the connection is then firmly established in Hitman Man Absolution, where both Kane and Lynch can be spotted during the firing range level, with Lynch stood firing a shotgun at a target whilst Kane can be found chilling over by the jukebox in the bar area. And if you're so inclined, it's possible for Agent 47 to kill the pair of them, so if you two had to suffer through either of those games, you can at least feel some level of catharsis for what you had to endure. Number 9, Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption. There's always been a modicum of debate as to whether or not the universes of Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption are one and the same. It's certainly true that GTA shares the same world as Manhunt and Bully, but the jury has always been out as to whether the exploits of John Marston are part of GTA's bloody history. Well, for those who are wondering, there's one little clue that may confirm this. More easily noticed when roaming around in first person, several bookshelves littered throughout Los Santos are home to Red Dead by Jay Marston, a very much on the nose reference to Rockstar's other flagship series. The existence of this book implies that after the events of Red Dead Redemption, Jack Marston became a writer, and given that the book is entitled Red Dead, you can assume the story is based on the exploits of his father, or it might detail what life was like for Jack after he got his revenge on Edgar Ross. The only discrepancy between the two worlds is that whilst the Red Dead series uses actual names of places such as New York, the GTA series has always opted for fictional ones. Still though, it's an interesting concept. Number 8, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy X-2. For years, fans have speculated which of the Final Fantasy games are connected, and whilst there are plenty of shared elements across all of the games, most notably the insanely adorable chocobos, there are scarce few pieces of hard evidence to suggest that any of the stories are truly linked. One such tasty morsel is hidden away in the often aligned but genuinely quite good Final Fantasy X-2. During your sphere hunting adventure with the Gull Wings, you'll frequently speak to a young Albed boy named Shinra. At first glance, you'd assume that's just a cheeky nod to the evil company that Cloud and his friends wage war upon, but given his tech savvy nature and his ruminations on how far he or future generations could harness the power of the far plane, it's pretty safe to assume that he has some involvement with the Shinra legacy. And while some may think this is just a throwaway reference, the connection was given further weight in the recent FF7 remake, with a portrait showing an adult wearing Shinra's masks surrounded by fellow colleagues and scientists. Whether or not it's actually him or one of his descendants remains to be seen, but it's still pretty damn cool nonetheless. Number 7, SSX, Burnout Paradise. There's certainly a world of difference between extreme snowboarding and high octane street racing, but like how both of these do exist within the real world, it seems that they're also closely related within the world of video games. Whilst burning rubber and smashing your opponents to pieces in Burnout Paradise, you can hear several radio broadcasts from one DJ Atomica, a name that may be familiar to those who have a love for the SSX series, as it's the same DJ that spins the decks during your high speed descents down snowy mountains. Atomica does his usual stick during his set lists and those who know him from the SSX games will take a lot of joy in hearing him do his thing, but he even goes so far as to read out a message for Mac Freely, one of the playable characters in SSX. Atomica tells Mac that given the recent spate of snow, the riding conditions on the mountains should be ideal. Whether or not the snowy mountains from SSX are situated anywhere near the sun-scorched Paradise City is anyone's guess, but it's a neat little detail all the same. Number 6, Battlefield Bad Company, Mirror's Edge. Despite it being much more futuristic in its presentation, it turns out that the Mirror's Edge and Battlefield Bad Company series take place around the same time and share a much deeper connection than first thought. Aside from the fact that both games were developed by DICE, there are a couple of small indicators that can be found throughout the events of the first Mirror's Edge game that tie the two narratives together. Most prominently are the radio broadcasts that can be heard during a brief respite in an elevator, one details how the ongoing conflict against the country of Sir Daristan is getting worse, and the military will be looking into a resolution 
resolution as soon as possible. Those that have played Battlefield Bad Company will know that Sedaristan is the antagonistic force that you must go up against, and the military intervention spoken of in the news broadcast pertains to the events of that game. Aside from that, it's also possible to find a bag belonging to one of Mirror's Edge runners during the campaign of Bad Company, which only serves to strengthen this connection, but also poses some interesting questions in regards to the runner's presence in Sedaristan. Number 5. Uncharted The Last of Us Two of the biggest blockbuster franchises in modern gaming, the Uncharted and Last of Us series have helped to push the envelope in interactive storytelling, and their subsequent leaps to the worlds of movies and TV are a testament to that prowess. But did you know that these two are in fact connected? During the events of Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, eagle-eyed players can spot a newspaper resting on the bar of the Pelican Inn. It seems rather unassuming at first, but the headline on it reads, Scientists still struggling to understand deadly fungus. This is of course referencing the fungal infection that leads to the outbreak in The Last of Us, and the fact that it's being reported on in the UK when The Last of Us is set in Pittsburgh is a big enough indicator that this would be a major event tying both universes together. The Naughty Dog shared universe doesn't quite end there though, as during your adventures as Nathan Drake, you can find the precursor orbs from the Jack and Daxter series, which begs the question, where was Dark Jack when the virus was running rampant? He'd have sorted that right out. Number 4. Fatal Frame – Dead or Alive It goes without saying that fighting games and horror games exist on the complete opposite ends of the gaming spectrum. One genre seeks to empower the player by putting them in the shoes of a highly skilled warrior, whilst the other looks to strip away all means of defence in the face of immeasurably terrible terrifying odds. Which makes the fact that both the Dead or Alive and Fatal Frame series exist within the same universe that little bit more perplexing. Admittedly, both series are developed by Koei Tecmo, so a crossover between their own properties shouldn't seem like such a wild idea. Hidden in a series of bonus missions that are unlocked when players complete Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater, Dead or Alive mainstay Ayane has her own side story that runs parallel to the events of the game. Sadly though, you can't resort to her insane ninja skills to take down ghosts, instead she must utilise the spirit stone flashlight to exorcise the evil spirits. Even further to this, this wasn't the first instance of Ayane appearing in the series, as the Xbox release of Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly featured Ayane's trademark purple outfit as an unlockable extra. Number 3. Mass Effect – The Sims 3 for the more dedicated players out there, or those who know the cheat codes to make your sim filthy rich and able to dedicate their lives to whatever they see fit, it's possible to build a time machine in The Sims 3 Ambitions expansion pack. This nifty contraption can cause all kinds of mayhem and hijinks, but it's also home to one of the strangest video game connections imaginable. After gallivanting through time and space, your sim will return, and a text box in the top right of the screen will clue you in on what they've been up to. One such tale reads, I appeared accidentally in the middle of a crowd while time travelling, but nobody noticed. They're all cheering about how some kind of shepherd just saved the galaxy from some huge ancient machine god threat. The celebration was definitely cool though. To some players this is simply a fun little story, but for those in the know, this is talking about the events of the Mass Effect series, with a large crowd cheering for Commander Shepard and their valiant efforts against the Reapers. Number 2. Gone Home – Bioshock 2 now, here's a pretty out there one. During the events of the Bioshock 2 DLC story, Minerva's Den, it's possible to find a computer that contains a fully playable game called Spitfire, a vector graphics arcade title in the vein of Asteroids. It certainly provided a fun distraction from the unspeakable horrors of Rapture. Who knew that many years later the game would pop up again, but in the most unlikely of places? Whilst exploring the house in Gone Home, it's possible to find a selection of Super Nintendo cartridges, and amongst them you'll find one for Super Spitfire, an upgraded version of the original game. Looking a little bit closer, you'll soon discover that Super Spitfire is published by CMP Interactive. CMP are also the initials of one Charles Milton Porter, the character players control during the events of Minerva's Den. It's been highly speculated that Charles managed to make it back to the surface after the events of Minerva's Den and founded a software company. Inspired by his little distraction with Spitfire, he decided to remake the game for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It may seem like a pretty weird one, but the dots do connect. Number 1. Phoenix Wright Dino Crisis Over the course of his storied career, Phoenix Wright has dealt with some of the most bat insane cases known to man, but never in a million years did we consider the possibility that someday he may come face to face with a horde of bloodthirsty dinosaurs. And whilst that sadly never occurred within the Ace Attorney series, it is a possibility given that the Republic of Borgnia exists within that world, which is confirmed via the passport of Ackby Hicks. 
For those of you who aren't Dino Crisis diehards, the Republic of Borgnia is the fictional island that was besieged by dinosaurs during the events of the original Dino Crisis game, meaning that Regina's hard-fought battle to survive against the dinosaurs is canon within the Ace Attorney timeline, as is the franchise's ill-advised journey into space with the abysmal Dino Crisis 3. Although my therapist tells me there is no Dino Crisis 3. If you need any further proof of this connection's legitimacy, look no further than the Ace Attorney anime, in which we're introduced to a character named Regina, who who, despite not being fully confirmed as the same person, bears an unmistakable resemblance to our beloved horror game heroine. I think we speak for everyone when we say we look forward to seeing Velociraptors taking the stand in the next Attorney game. OBJECTION! Let us know what you thought of this list in the comments below and any other video game connections that you're aware of. I've been CypherWhatCulture.com and have a good week.